And now we are ready to roll. Um, we should do like have, I um, you have watched or or listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, right? A little bit, yeah. Not much. I feel like in the beginning he always says like three, two, one, and we're live, and then he just starts right away. We should have that okay. countdown. Okay. So who's counting down? I just did it, so we don't have to do it twice. But we are, <laughs> we are, we are rolling. Episode forty, episode forty of the Bamson Experience. Uh, mm. Good to see you again, Hans Christian, from a distance. Likewise, Anas. Very good to see you again. I actually think for once, if not you, who needs to get a haircut, it's actually it's actually me. Like my hair is so long, so I apologize for that. I promise next time I will be uh, looking much sharper. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm. 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 I'm trying not to look at, at you. I'm trying just to look into the to the to the camera lens. Mm. Uh, I I I tend to when we do it here online. I tend to stare at myself all the time and my picture is mm. here on the left side. So it's like I'm looking down into the corner. It's. Uh, I, I need to adapt to this online thing. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I look more at you actually. So I feel like we have eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird also it's weird also looking into the lens and not look into the the person's eyes that, that you're talking to yeah true 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 but before we get into the episode to the people watching or listening or doing both uh, welcome back to another episode of the banton experience thank you so much for tuning in uh your two hosts as always uh, myself anna santonson and uh my co-host uh, the less important host here on the banton experience hence christian beating um yeah yeah thanks so much Anas. you're always so respectful there was actually a question yeah. from one of our listeners uh, and he was like are you seriously not having as good a relationship anymore as you had before i don't know if you were joking about it last time or something <laughs> but uh, someone was asking if there's like kind of bad blood between us so with that introduction that might uh, might actually tell him that there is bad blood between us but there isn't right I, i'm still okay <sighs> even though you uh, moved out of denmark <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I still uh, like you I sometimes. Think it's, uh, yeah, I think our relationship uh, is is uh, is is getting better since we're not seeing each other uh, <laughs> that often anymore. I think it's yeah, it's true. It's good for us. Hmm. I agree. Uh, now the 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 uh, the trash talk is is obviously always going back and forth. Uh, so if you don't understand the, our sarcasm, um, hmm. that's that's all it is. It's just a. Uh, is it banter? It's called. It's just like trash talk, back and forth, having having fun with each other. Uh, there's a uh, there's no bad blood between the Bamton experience two hosts. Agree completely. Agree completely. And how are you doing, Anas? Let's go into that first. Like uh, last time we spoke to you, oh, we did this one. Uh, it's like some ten days ago or something. And you said you had a lot of things that you needed to still sort out in uh, Dubai with your move and everything. Is I don't expect that everything is in place now in ten days. But uh, are you like slowly getting into a more structured, uh, yeah, uh, daily, uh, yeah, way of life there? And is is you are you getting more and more under uh, yeah figured out? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm getting settled. Uh, everything yeah. is, uh, is is going just fine. Uh, the practice is uh, is is going well, um, and yeah, I just I'm I'm getting to know the places to do grocery shopping, the places to eat out if I want to do that. Um, you know how the traffic works and 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 everything. So um we just had a we just had some slight issues with the apartment here last week uh some water damage and everything so we had to move uh, to a, to another apartment um so yeah we did we did that this sunday but uh, other than that everything is uh is, is going very well um so you're gonna I'm, stay in you know, the new apartment uh like just for a short while and then move back or no it, it's it's ba it's in the same building it's just a, a few floors uh down um but it's okay. it's it's the exact same apartment so okay. um no so so other than that other than the water damage everything is uh is going good um i mean i must say i i enjoyed uh a lot um i can i mean we talked about the weather last time i mean when <laughs> yeah. i when i when i'm done practicing in the morning i I, I go outside and sit in the sun for five ten ten minutes um, be before I go home, and it's just like my muscles feel feel much better, my mood is much better, uh, I feel more energized uh, in general. Um, so yeah, I'm for now. I I, I really enjoy enjoy to be here, and uh, I just got some company. 
um, yeah, the last I saw few that. days. I saw that online as well, yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. So, I mean, since my injury, I've been basically just uh, practicing myself and, uh, and, and, and coach, coach Joachim. Um, mm-hmm. Just doing a lot of uh, multi-feeding drills and uh, footwork. And uh, obviously, he's, he, he's a good uh, player. He was a good player, so he, he can feed me from the net. Uh, when he's not covering the full court, uh, and uh, so I did did stuff like that with with, with one shuttle, um, but mostly it's just been multi feeding here since uh, I've just been trying to recover from the injury. But now I finally got some company, uh, Laksha and uh, Samia uh, has joined me here in uh, here in Dubai. So hopefully we will have some good weeks of uh, of practicing. Uh, and it's nice it's nice to to do some two against one and one against one uh, finally again. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. How how long are those guys there for? Uh, we are we are going to practice together this week and next week. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's very good. We have yeah, had that's... some we have had some good sessions here the the first few days, and the intensity will hopefully just get get higher and higher as we go on into into the weeks. Yeah, did they bring a coach as well, or is it just a Joachim who's gonna be no. in charge? Yeah, so so um, so no coach yet. Uh, there, I think Lakshya brought a, a physio and a strength coach, hmm. um, and then his his coach is then joining in a few days. Uh, I'm hmm. not sure the exact date. So yeah, so they they brought a, a small entourage, and then um, hmm. yeah, so 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 that's uh, that's very good. Yeah, it's great to hear. It also must mean that your your injury is really uh, getting a lot better compared to the last time we yeah. spoke to you. So uh, yeah, everything is on track with the the tournaments in January for both uh, you and me. We got a lot of questions about that as well. If we are going to join Malaysia, in India, and Indonesia, and I think you even have a plan of joining Thailand as well, right? Or has that changed? I've I I have in, I've entered all the tournaments, so I'll have yeah. to to wait and see how how it will all play out. How how well I do um in the tournament yeah. so i've entered all all four i'm eager to to get out and, and play again so if i'm fit and if i'm like motivated i will i will play uh everything uh that's the plan but i'm i'm also like i really don't want to jinx anything it's mm. like it's it's yeah. i i can't even like uh i just i'm really just taking one day at the time i mean this this injury caused me so much uh, misery in the last uh, six months so it's like I don't want to jinx anything if I'm going to play the tournaments I'm going to play but I'm just taking one one single practice session uh, at a time and then hope for no no bad reactions uh, with the injury afterwards and um, yeah obviously I, I hope that I'm going to play the tournaments but I, I won't like get too fired up about it because I did that multiple times last year. I was super excited for the summer tournaments and I was super excited again for the the European uh, circuit uh European circuit the European uh, leg in in mm. in Denmark French Germany so yeah and then it was just like a huge disappointment that I had to pull yeah. out so I'm trying I'm trying not to get like too caught up in it uh just take one practice at a time and hopefully I will be fit and ready to play yeah so um yeah how about you is it is it going well with with, with your training yeah, yeah, everything is good. This morning was uh, like insanely cold again in uh, our practice uh, hall. Uh, right now in Denmark, it's uh, below uh, zero degrees Celsius here. So every morning is just freezing cold. Um, so yeah, that that is not great. But my body is uh, is actually doing pretty well. I've been a little bit tired this uh, this week because I went to Czech Republic in the weekend to play the uh, Czech badminton league um so i had a couple of matches there on both saturday and sunday and a lot of travel and stuff like that but i'll i'll say overall i uh, i feel like it's going well and i'm definitely on track for playing all uh, all those uh, th- three events in uh, in january so yeah cool. excited about that i also just saw the uh, mnq list and i will be the last one in the main draw in the uh, in uh, indonesia so i will not have to play qualifying so that's a, a big advantage for me nice that's yeah. good it's good to hear yeah. hope hope that we will uh, see each other in person out there we will but, for um, sure. yeah so it's um the last tournament of the year uh has been played the world tour finals uh was the 
yeah, the end, the ending of 2022. So I think we should first of all talk uh, about the World Tour Finals, uh, some of the the highlights from the event, and maybe just wrap up 2022 in general. If we have some uh, some good memories or something that we want to mention yeah. about it, and then as always, uh, the the fans, uh, the listeners, has been really really. Uh, doing great on Instagram, giving us a lot of questions as we asked for. So maybe we can uh, answer some of the questions uh, in the end. Yeah, I agree completely. And let's just get into the uh, the World Tour Finals uh, straight away. I didn't actually watch that that many of the matches. Uh, I basically only watched a couple of matches in the uh, in the group stage, but uh, yeah, I followed all the results. Did, did you watch any of the like the final or sem- semi final matches? The only the only matches that I watched was uh, some of the men's singles, yeah. um, and I've been watching some of the highlights on YouTube. You know the yeah. the, the five minute uh, edits and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I I didn't really watch it uh, a lot. I was caught up training, doing my own stuff. Uh, yeah. But I saw a few things here and there. But we have some questions about some like controversial stuff or some things, and I actually have no idea what what it is. So I don't know if you have looked into like a. Uh, some of yeah, the there's stuff. yeah, there's a couple of uh, questions from uh, from the match between Kora and Naroka and Victor in uh, in the uh, semi final. So not the group stage match; they played each other both in the group stage and in the uh, the semi final. And in the semi final one, there was a point where Kora hit the net, and the the umpire didn't really uh, yeah notice. Uh, I haven't seen that one, but there was also another situation at at five four for Victor in the final game, third game. Uh, he makes a lift that is out, uh, but it's called in. So Victor gets a point for 6-4. Then Naroka uh, takes a challenge. He's right about the challenge. So he gets a point for five, but Victor doesn't get deducted one. So instead of five all, it's then 6-5 for, for Victor. So he, he got a free point there. Uh, and no one noticed. It didn't seem like neither Naroka or uh, Victor really noticed what went on. Um, I think probably because Naroka, he got the point that he he should get. So he was still serving from the right side. So I guess no one really noticed that on the scoreboard, Victor suddenly got uh, got an extra point. Um, but I think it's quite interesting that it, this mistake happened because at Welsh Open, uh, a challenge event that was played uh, the week before, uh, our teammate Victor Svensson, he played a match uh, against a Belgium guy where he actually got two free points like this so uh that, that was just like in the middle of the match where suddenly the scoreboard just changed and he got two extra uh free points and also Maunus Johannesson another Danish guy in his match against the Japanese player the same thing happened he just got a free point uh, mid, mid rally so during a rally he just suddenly had an extra point uh, and again the umpires they didn't really notice uh so I, I just think like for one, one thing is that it's unprofessional that it can happen but it's it also makes me wonder, like, if they are not, why they are not also counting the points on, like, they have a they have a board up there with them, uh, so they should also note it manually because you cannot trust the, uh, like, this technical solution. Te- just to technolo- work. technology in general, you should never trust it like a hundred percent. No, 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 and I, I, of course it's not like at five all in the final game it necessarily has a great meaning for who will win or who will not, but it could also happen at eighteen all or nineteen all, and it's just yeah, it's it's not a great look for Babson. I, I think it's it's really unprofessional, um, yeah, in every way. This situation with Victor and Koda that was in the semifinal in the in what game third third game? Third game, yeah, at five four in the uh, third game. I think I actually watched that. Uh, now that you tell the story, and I was like, mm-hmm. there was something, something wrong here. But, yeah, uh, yeah. but I wasn't. Uh, the, the the guy I was watching the match with was like, yeah, I didn't really recognize anything. Uh, no. So yeah, but but yeah, I but think that's, that's also because yeah. Koda he got the point that he was supposed to get, and it's not that often you look at the the point total of the guy who's not serving because, yeah. Obviously, that's not until he wins the next point that he will uh, he will have to be standing in the right side and everything. So, I guess that's also why the players didn't really uh, didn't really notice because like usually when you're on court, you have a pretty good sense of like what the score is and if if some mix up uh, happens. But yeah, it didn't feel like anyone really uh, really noticed in that situation. No, I mean, 
what is there to say? First of all, it shouldn't, it sh- it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. Uh, it's, mm. uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it must be the umpire's fault uh, that that, sure. that the umpire is not uh, really, really paying attention to the score. And and as you mentioned, they they have maybe a piece of paper up there. They can they can write down the score all the time and keep track of the uh, of of the score. But also, I think it's weird that the players. But I don't know. I mean, I have experienced it a few times where. Uh, but I think I like I figured out right away that there's something wrong here, and then I mm-hmm. asked the umpire, "Does he really have?" Does he really have ten? I, I'm quite sure he only has nine or something like that. Uh, but I've experienced. I remember one time in the Australia Open. Actually, I was playing against the legend from Korea, Lee Lee Hyung Il. Mm-hmm. I think I was down. I think I was down like fifteen, thirteen in the in the deciding game, mm-hmm. and then he won a point, and the score should have been sixteen, uh, thirteen, and I was like preparing to to. To receive his serve in the in the like uh, from sixteen right from the mm-hmm. right side, but then this I saw that the score was still fifteen thirteen. So I was like, okay, I just mm-hmm. started to walk over to the other side, and Leongil didn't really pay attention to it or anything, mm-hmm. and then he just served again fifteen mm-hmm. fifteen thirteen, and then I went on to win like six points in a row. So I was leading mm-hmm. nineteen fifteen. Yeah. Then I end. Then I actually ended up losing twenty one nineteen. So it was like a crazy ro- roller coaster, right, right yeah. there. But it's just so crazy that he was actually supposed to lead sixteen yeah. thirteen. Mm. I mean, that's a huge difference uh, in in such a crucial point mm. in a match. Um, and then yeah. you then you can argue: Should I have said anything, or is it is it is it not my uh, my fault? I mean, I don't know. But uh, it's crazy yeah, that th- it can happen. I really think of all there is not a lot of a lot of players out there that would uh, that would make that correction uh, even if they were like one hundred percent certain that they got a point too much or too many. I don't think uh, yeah it it would be very very few people who would actually uh, go to the umpire and say I think you gave me one point too much uh, at this mm. level. Even if some people out there watching uh, think that sounds a little bit sad, it's uh, yeah I'm. Very, very confident. That's how it is for uh, for almost everyone on uh, on the world stage when you when you get to that little of competition. I think. I mean, obviously, it would be uh, a very, very sportsman like thing to do. Mm. But mm. the thing I ask myself is, would I ever get this one back? Let's mm. say let let's say it happens the opposite way. Uh, the next round or something. I'm hundred percent certain that I wouldn't get it back. So yeah, it's like. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, obviously if if you are willing to do that, and there's also it's also a big difference uh, if let's say it's early in the first game or if it's like at a crucial crucial point in the in the third or something like that. Yeah. So maybe maybe some player would do it for goodwill if they know <clears throat> that I'm, you know I'm leading like uh, yeah, fifteen yeah. six six or something. I'm going to win anyway. Then they yeah. do it for goodwill and they look very good on on. On television and stuff, and they get a mm. lot of praises for their sportsmanlike mm. behavior. But if it's a very, very crucial moment, mm. probably no one would 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 do stuff like that. Yeah, at the Danish Nationals a couple of years ago, actually, when I lost to uh, an Indian guy, which is also crazy that's possible at the Danish Nationals on twenty fourteen, the final game, I hit one like I have a like a one hundred percent chance at the net, and I smash it far out of the back line. And the line judge for some reason calls it in, and there's like no correction or anything. And uh, I gave that one to it was a guy called Karan I played against, but that was more like, like I've already lost this match. It it doesn't really matter, and it was just a ridiculous situation. Uh, but mm. again, I completely agree. Had that been twenty all instead, I'm pretty confident that I even I also wouldn't have uh, given it away. Uh, yeah, at that time. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's so it's easy for com- it's easy for for some people to sit outside and say that that's very unsportsmanlike behavior. You you mm-hmm. should have you mm-hmm. should have um, let the umpire know, but the the people probably don't realize that there is a lot on the line here. I mean, it it could be a semifinal or a final. There could be ranking points. There could be uh, prize money. I mean, sponsorship deals. There could be so much on on the line. So it's it's very easy to sit on the outside and complain about. People not uh, doing this or that, but it's yeah. it's tricky to be in in the moment uh, right there. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. 
Anyway, on a more positive note about that match with Kodai and uh, Victor, did, did you watch any of that one, the semi final? Yeah, I did. I, I I started to watch it like halfway in, actually, from mm. when Kodai was leading 11 6, I believe. Um, I started from watching uh, at that point. And, you know, right when I entered the match, Victor started to catch up with Kodai. Um, mm. And I was like, obviously, I could see that Victor was frustrated. I could see that he did not have this very, very confident feeling in there. Mm. Um, but But at the same time, I was like, I can't really uh, see how Kodai has uh, come to this lead. I mean, mm. how how did he win the first game and how, how is he leading 11-6? Because from that point, it seemed like very, very tough uh, for Kodai yeah. to, to get his points. Mm. Yeah, I think from what I've seen from the highlights, and I, also, I actually spoke to Kenneth Jonasson today uh, about that particular match, uh, uh, just out of curiosity, because he, he, he watched it and he said that like Kodai, uh, he, he showed in that match that he also can play like this very attacking style like he, he almost refused to give away any lifts or try to hit it away from the baseline he just kept it downwards he just kept on working like extremely hard and as both you and me know if you do that against Victor Ray, you just keep it downwards you play the net all the time of course it's possible in some ways to do it but it is physically like insanely hard because you're gonna work so so hard and if that's what he did for the the first game uh, I find it even more impressive that he's actually not giving, uh, like, kind of letting go in the final game, because uh, he had that eleven six lead in the second uh, or ten six or something like that, and he still loses it very close. And then I think a lot of players would be like, it's very hard to to really get into that final game, still believing that you have what it takes to uh, to win, uh, because like now Victor he can relax a bit more and he's physically uh, on top. And he also Victor got that lead in the final game all the way, but he still ended up getting 18 in the final game. I, I'm very very impressed by uh, by like not only his physical toughness, but like also his uh, his mental toughness. So I think that that really uh, says a lot about like his year in general, uh, but also yeah the type of player that we can expect to see next year on the World Tour. I mean, he 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 has had a quick rise uh, to mm-hmm. to the top. I mean, the I I think it was the the first time I saw him play was at in Thailand, uh, just early this uh, this summer, uh, and mm. I was like, to be honest, and and I think maybe we spoke about it yeah. before. I wasn't really super impressed. I was like, that that seems a bit weird, but he's yeah. he's definitely a very very tough player. He is he's super quick. He's fighting hard. He's getting a lot back. He has good good uh, good defense. Um, and then he's like, he's doing trick shots and he's growing in confidence. That's for sure. Um, it's very rare that you see nowadays like real trick shots. I mean, usually it's just like some disguise, a different way of like this, this, this disguising your like lifts or, mm. or short uh, net strokes and stuff. But he's doing like real trick shots. I he, yeah. I remember he did did one against Victor in was it in in French Open uh, where he like he was in the backhand. He 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 let it like drop to the floor and then he crossed it and that was like. You don't you don't see that so often. So I think that yeah. was uh, that that's that's quite fun that uh, yeah. we have a player that's that's doing uh, stuff like that. In some ways, we get a lot of questions about Kodai. I think almost yeah. like every every single time. I yeah. think Kodai he also reminds me a little bit bit of uh, Sue Wang uh, from from uh, Chinese Taipei. Mm-hmm. Um, in his How like, so? I feel like in his in his in his attitude a little bit like he. I feel like uh, Tsui Wang is also a player who's always looking like extremely tired. It's mm. like bending over his knees yeah. and like smiling and looking like this is the toughest match that he has ever played. But you know for a fact that he's he's going to fight uh, fight mm. through it, and so that you never really know if if this like is this like uh, is he just like pretending to be tired yeah. or is yeah. he or yeah. is he is he actually is he actually tired? And I don't, I don't really know. It seems like Kodai is pretty tired, especially in the match against Victor. But you know that he's going to fight through it, so you can't really yeah. give it that much uh, importance. Yeah. yeah, importance is that the right? Importance, importance, importance. Yeah, yeah, importance. Okay. Yeah. I, I see what you mean. Me. I, I, I think uh, like one, obviously one big difference between the two is that I think Sue Wang, he's much more like the guy that goes for winners all the time, right? And shorter rallies. 
But I still feel like Naroka, he's trying to engage in, in longer rallies uh, most of the time overall. Yeah. 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 It, yeah it seems like he, he, he's like, He's a good defensive player. Uh, it mm. seems like he's, I mean, he's uh, obviously a Japanese player, and they like to to play long rallies, long matches, and they like to to, to have a solid defense. Uh, mm. I think that's the way they have been training from mm. from a young age. So yeah. they build up like a very good uh, good defense. But I also feel like there are some similarities in the in their attack. I yeah. think Shui Wang's attack is obviously uh, it's it's harder. He, he has a pretty pretty hard smash. Yeah. But it's like it's not really super super close to the lines all the time. It's just like a bunch of different strokes coming downwards. You mm. never really know like is it going to be well placed or not. But it's just like a bunch of strokes just coming mm. down, and it's almost like a little bit annoying to retrieve because you you would expect high high level players to uh, be able to hit the uh, close to the lines all the time and stuff. And this is like it's not really super sharp all the time, but it's just like consistently. It's- coming down he's working hard he's all yeah. over the place and yeah so he's kind of just adding the pressure all the time like instead of necessarily going for the winner straight away it's kind of like yeah just over time he just adds enough pressure for you to either make a bad decision or a mistake or uh, give him a, like a a very big chance to uh, to finish it off i feel like that but i also feel like he he was i mean obviously he was leading 1917 in the second game against victor he was that close uh, mm. of, from winning the match he could have won the yeah. match and i think if he had like let's say lizzy ja suwe wang attack in in mm. some of those last rallies where he was like smashing for the lines and it went just a few centimeters out mm. i think he he had a bunch of chances to to yeah. to win the rally uh, but he couldn't really finish it so um, it's going to be interesting to see uh, next yeah. year if he can if he can add that element to his game. We get a lot of questions like if he can uh, take over from where Momota uh, was before the the car accident and everything. And like like first of all, in the rankings, he is going to overtake Momota uh, when the rankings are back to normal uh, in January. Maybe he already did it. I'm actually not even sure, but no doubt that he's going to be a top ten player. Uh, not okay, but it's going to be interesting to see if like he can add a layer because I still believe if you want to be one of the best or the best as Momoto was before, it's not enough to be very solid uh, and very fast and all these uh, things. You will also have to be able to yeah, to score your points uh, more consistently against the top guys, which is exactly what you're saying there, that he, he missed that little bit in uh, in the end of the second. Uh, so it's it's going to be really interesting to see if he can uh, he can add that layer to his game. Uh, but yeah, in general, with the... With the way he has uh, evolved his game in just like six months, then I think there's no reason to believe he can't do that for sure. No, it's 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 going to be very interesting, uh, very 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 fun player to to follow. I mm. I was playing against him this summer in Japan for the first time. It was uh, it was a, a very good match and a good experience to 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 play against him. So it's going yeah. to be interesting. De- definitely a, a guy to watch out for in the future as we as we talked about quite a lot here on the yeah on the podcast. Yeah. Just one other men's singles uh, result actually that I really took notice of uh, that week is uh, like the friend of this podcast. We had him on Pranoy. Like we uh, we call him like the king slayer and I think he showed it once again like I know his group state match against Victor it didn't really mean anything like Victor was already the group winner and Hanoi was already out of the event but it still takes something to to beat Victor it's only like Victor's uh, third loss this year and it, it's just impressive to see again with Hanoi that uh, he keeps on winning these matches against the uh, the best guys in the world it's uh, yeah it is it is very very impressive. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, he, he did he play sec? Uh, did he play uh, fourth last in the group stage? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. I think. But I think but, he did. But, yeah. But but just because of that win, you feel like he he left the tournament with with some sort of like big big win. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. He, yeah, it's. Um, I would. Yeah, I would like to go. I would like to go into uh, twenty twenty three with my last match being a, a win against uh, Victor. That that's not a bad way to go into a new year for sure it's uh it, it's impressive i mean I, i've always been like a big fan of uh, prano i think he has a very very solid game uh mm. just like i mean yeah it's it's super weird i mean he's able to beat the absolute best he's always been doing that been able to beat ching long lee chung wei lindan also i believe yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but he's never really won any of the of of the of the bigger tournaments. Uh, I feel he he has the level to do it. Obviously, he's he's shown that multiple times. So it's it's he 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 has he has had a very good year. It's going to be interesting to see him in in the next year as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Anything else from uh, the World Tour Finals that like you took note of in the uh, in the other categories? As Asan and Sechewan, uh, once again reaching uh, <laughs> yeah. reaching the final. I mean, they just yeah. they just never stop. It they they just keep <laughs> keep uh, delivering good results. I mean, sometimes they might not, but they always come back with with, mm. with a good one. Uh, yeah, just a, a little later. It's it's impressive. I'm I'm really wondering how long they can they can keep it going. Yeah, I remember last year at the World Championships, uh, there were a lot of talk if if that was going to be like the final one, if uh, if they were going to finish. And then now this year, they just keep on going. They made another World Championship final, they just made the final of the World Tour finals. They're still amongst the the best pairs. And I saw uh, they gave an interview afterwards, and they it seemed like they have no intention of quitting. Like uh, they said, we know we are already old, but we enjoy playing and we just want to enjoy every single match. And uh, from the way I read it, it didn't seem like they had any thoughts of quitting basically. So I, I think we are stuck with them for another year. And I, I think we are all uh, quite happy to still watch them. It's just insanely impressive. I know they didn't win, but yeah, I still think that's the story from the uh, the men's doubles event that they made another final, uh, even though of course the Chinese uh, O and, and Leo they they deserve some praise for winning, but I will remember it for uh, for the daddies doing uh, doing the thing <laughs> once again. Once again, yeah. um, did did was there like quite a lot of drift in this uh, arena that they played in? Yeah, I I heard there was. Uh, I was watching again in the group stage matches. I was watching a bit, and uh, they said there was a lot of side drift and also a bit of uh, back and forth. Uh, but for some reason, in the final uh, on finals day, they said the the air condition was off. Uh, so in the final, the conditions were completely different. It was much easier to play the full court, uh, um, which is obviously not great for Asana and Sichuan, and, uh, and I think probably also not great in the men's singles for. Uh, for Ginsing against uh, against Victor, um, yeah. So I think the conditions changed a little bit over over the week. Okay. Yeah. The the arena that we played Thomas Cup in was mm-hmm. also like uh, full of uh, full of drift, quite a yeah. uh, quite significant uh, yeah. drift in in that arena. So I think actually one thing that was quite strange or odd to see was that there was a lot of players slipping on the court. Uh, and if you remember from Thomas Cup uh, in Thailand, there was a lot of complaints about that, that the mats were slippery all the time. And they even tried to change the mats and it was still sort of a problem. Uh, and I noticed that in this event, it was, I think, was it Lining mats this time and it was Victor last time. Uh, so I was wondering like, if it's if it's an issue with the humidity in Thailand or something that makes it like more slippery in Thailand compared to so many other places. I, I don't know. I just noticed, and then I thought, yeah, that's that's strange because we had the same issue in uh, in Bangkok back in uh, back in May. I don't know. Yeah. Let's uh, no. let's find out next time we play out there if uh, if it happens like third time in a row. Yeah. But I yeah. I remember I remember the floor being quite slippery in last time we were in Bangkok, and it's like it's the, it's the it's the worst feeling for a badminton player. Yeah. If yeah. if you have that feeling of not being really like, uh, yeah, if, if you just if you just like fall to the ground all the time every time mm-hmm. you make a hard push to the sides and your feet just yeah. like slips away under you, it's 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 a terrible feeling and you just get so uncertain to yeah. to jump around and I mean I've experienced twisting my ankle uh, before. It wasn't because of slippery fall, but it's just like you get you get quite scared for your knees and your ankles and everything. So. Yeah. It's it's so important that it it gets uh, fixed if if the floor is slippery. Yeah, I think in general you move a little bit slower when you feel like it's slippery because you kind of you want to feel like more safe. So you plant your feet maybe a little bit harder on the floor, if that makes sense. And that way you just you get away a tiny bit slower, and you just feel in generally that in general that you you move around slower. But it it is definitely a big issue if uh, if the if there's just a small feeling of this uh, slipperiness. But there's difference uh, in the in the different uh, mats. Um, mm. So I yeah. think I think a Yonix mat is quite like rough on the surface. Mm. It's uh, mm. so so you you get a quite a good grip on on grip, the floor. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's 
it's super uncomfortable to dive on. If you, <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah. And and you you must know this because you you dive a lot, so you probably yeah. end up with a lot of like scars and blood on your knees and everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, I agree. And the worst thing you can get for a player like me who's diving a lot is a completely new Yonex mat. Like, if there's not been anyone on, you basically just have to touch it with your skin, and then the skin just peels off. It's a, mm. My knees are always a mess after tournaments like that. But on, on the other hand, the mats that are, like, that has this more, like, a smooth surface, they can be mm. quite slippery if, if there's, like, a sweat falling uh yeah. from your face and stuff so it's like there's good and bad good and bad bad things uh, about the the different mats but mm. i've been thinking about like maybe you should have different uh types of of uh, shoes for different mm. types of, of mats i yeah. don't know i don't know if 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 there's uh if that's a good idea or, or not but maybe maybe there maybe if if the floor is like has this rough surface Maybe the the sole on the shoe needs to be built different than if the surface is like totally totally smooth. Yeah, yeah, that makes know. sense. For sure, in like in tennis, you have different shoes for different surfaces. Uh, maybe the difference is also a little bit bigger from grass to to clay. But I actually I actually think that could be an idea because uh, the the difference is quite big from the like the smooth mats to the uh, the more rough ones on uh, on the surface. I will go to 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 Victor, my sponsor, and and recommend yeah. that. Yeah, good idea, good idea. Thanks. One uh, final thing I want to uh, talk about from the World Tour Finals, unless you have something else, is uh, like we got a lot of comments about the semi-final draws because I hate that rule that we have in the World Tour Finals that the w- number one and two in each group that don't just cross over to play each other. They, you actually tr- make a new draw for the semifinal, so you can play the same person as you just played in the group stage. And like obviously, it's done like that in badminton because there's been a lot of speculating, uh, speculating before, where you then maybe try to be second in your group because you already knew that there had been a surprise in the other group, so you try to avoid the best player. And this time for the World Tour Finals, I think it was like only two of the semifinals were with different opponents compared to the group stage and it's just so like i actually think it's demotivating to watch when you have to watch the same match as you just played uh, was played the day before two days before so i i'm really i i really think they need to look at if if that rule has to change again because uh, yeah I, I really hate watching the same match again and again and i also think it's it's unfair in some way actually like for example in men's singles you can be drawn against victor in the group and that that's no benefit to that because you can also get him again in the semi-final uh which was what happened to uh to kodai uh in the, for this instance so yeah I, I i hate that rule i hate that rule so you you would rather that your number one from one group faces number two from the other group, just knowing yeah. who you're going to face. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think one one way that you could then, because obviously if it changed the rule back to that, it has been like that before. They will be afraid that sometimes it will be like a tactical choice if the two, um, like if you're in the final group match and you have two players who are already through. So if they have two wins and the other two players in the group has zero wins, then they will speculate, do I want to win this match, depending on who's first or second in the other group. And I think one way to, there's actually two ways to avoid that. First of all, you can, uh, instead of just giving like a, a fixed amount of prize money, depending on where you end, you should also give prize money for actually winning matches. They also do that in tennis. So you actually get a good amount for every match you win in the group stage. So there's a lot of stake even uh, also for the guys who already lost uh, the first two matches. And so always there's a lot of money at stake. So you want to, yeah, you want to have, win as much money as possible, obviously. But another thing they could do is that on day one, the two winners of the two matches in that group they play each other on day two and the two losers play each other on day two because that way you will not have anything decided on day three. You cannot end up in a situation where everyone has already won uh, the place in the semifinal. So there will always be something at stake. And then it's a lot harder to speculate if you need to win or lose because in any case, you probably need to win the match to be 100% certain of uh, making it through. So I think that change is actually like, it's very easy to do. 
and it solves a lot of issues. There will still be a, the odd situation every now and then where you cannot avoid it, but I think it's much, much better than what, what we experience right now. I hope that made sense. I think, yeah, it, it made sense. Uh, I think especially the the second suggestion you, that mm -hmm. you came with, uh, the two winners from the first uh, from the first day will play play against each other the next day. I think that makes uh, very good sense. Mm -hmm. um, because it, I have been thinking about it. It's a tricky one because let's say let's say if you win this match, you're going to play against Victor. If you lose mm -hmm. this match, you're going to play against. Yeah. A anyone else? Some <laughs> a a any anyone else? I mean, yeah. you would you would much rather play against anyone else uh, yeah. than Victor. So obviously, yeah. there's. I mean, you you cannot avoid speculating about it because yeah. it's a big big difference. It's much better for you not to play against Victor. Yeah. But I think I think the second suggestion, also the the first one, is is good as yeah. well. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna forward that suggestion actually. Uh, with uh, through the Danish Federation, they have this uh, thing where they sometimes uh, have meetings with BWF and try to um, ask for some uh, some things to change. Sometimes things change for the better, so I'm gonna forward that. And it's some it's been brought up before. It's not it's not even a, an idea of of mine. It's uh, yeah, I, I think they do that as well actually in the World Tour finals in uh, in tennis or season ending finals. Okay, so yeah. But yeah, let, let that be it for the World Tour Finals. Let's do a couple of uh, listener questions before we uh, wrap up this uh, this episode. I think uh, I think the the first question that's uh, from uh, our loyal listener, <laughs> I believe, since he's always he's always coming up with some good questions. It's from our colleague uh, Mas Grost Christoffersen, Mister Do's and Don'ts on Instagram. Yes, uh, he he asks. Biggest moments in 2022, personally, and for badminton in general. Uh, I think you should go uh, go ahead, Hans Christian. Yeah, I think for me personally, there has not been a lot of good moments in terms of uh, badminton. Uh, but if like that's one one uh, experience that was definitely uh, yeah better than everything else for me, and that was uh, the match against China in Thomas Cup. Uh, where uh, yeah we beat them for the first time in I think it was something like 24 years and I think for only the second time ever played the deciding match against Wang Hong Yang at two in the morning finished at the uh, three or something like that and uh, like even though it only decided if we won the group or, or came second we were already through to the quarterfinal it was just uh, yeah, it was a big moment to beat China finally I've never tried beating China in uh, in a team event before uh, and it is for sure the the top badminton nation, uh, and that that was like my golden moment this year. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really make any finals or any stuff like that. So for me, it's it's pretty clear that was uh, that was the moment for me this year. How that, about that, you? that 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 match was. Uh, I mean, I think we all we talked about this as well, uh, yeah, yeah. but it's it's many episodes ago. But you were the final match. The score was two two against China uh, yeah. at the Thomas Cup, and all of us. Most most of the yeah. team already went to bed, and yeah. it was like we we had to go home and recover because we were going to play again the the day after. So we couldn't yeah. stay there and cheer for you, even though we wanted to. Yeah. And then I think I woke up in the middle of the night. I checked the results, and I was like, "God damn it!" Yeah. <laughs> and Christian yeah. actually won. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that that was that was crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, the biggest moment moment of 2022, I really have to search a lot for a good moment for me personally <laughs> in 2022. But I think it must be, um, in in terms of results, it must be the Japan Open this summer, mm -hmm. uh, where I reached uh, reached the semifinal and played a a solid semifinal as well against the Nishimoto. He he yeah. he he ended up winning the the whole event, and so I think that was. Coming from a, a horrible start of the year, horrible summer with with the injuries, and then only with a few weeks of, uh, of of practice, I went to Japan to play the World Championships. Lost to Kenta Nishimoto there, but then went on to play the Japan Open. I reached the reached the semifinal, played some good matches, got some confidence again, and and got the thrill of uh, of of playing a tournament. Uh, that was that was that was definitely the the biggest uh, moment for me uh, in 2022 to to get back out in the world, play some badminton. Yeah. And then obviously the injury came back again afterwards. So I haven't mm -hmm. really played since. So 
actually i'm ending this year on a high note uh relative <laughs> relatively high note <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true that's no. true yeah i think that that's a good choice i also can come up with many uh, great moment, moments for you uh, maybe the silver medal at the european championships but that was kind of more like an expected thing as well perhaps yeah, but but that 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 was actually the match that that started my downfall i was like <laughs> It it got it got me so frustrated after that, and we went directly to Thailand to play the the, the Thomas Cup, and I just yeah. remember that I was so frustrated after the the European Championships final. Yeah. I I never really got rid of the uh, of the frustrations, and then right yeah. into the Thomas Cup, I just brought the negative emotions uh, with me, yeah. and it was just getting into like a a negative uh, spiral, and it it, it wasn't yeah. good. All right, we'll go with the Japan Open. If we should also answer like, the it. second part of uh, the question uh, with the, like the biggest moment for badminton in general in 2022. Um, when I thought about this question, uh, the first thing, <coughs> oh sorry, the first uh, thing that came to mind for me actually was uh, the men's doubles world championships winners, uh, Aaron Chia and uh, Wu Yixoi from uh, Malaysia. Uh, n- not because uh, like the level or anything was anything like very spectacular. It's more like just that Malaysia finally got that elusive gold medal at a world championship. Like Malaysia, one of the biggest badminton nations, has never won a world, uh, yeah, gold medal at World or Olympics, and that they finally got over the hump and got that gold. I think that's. Of course, huge for Malaysia, but I think it's actually also a, a very good moment for for badminton. So I, I think for sure that's what I remember the World Championships for. Uh, of course, very impressive with all the other winners as well. But if I think back at the 2022 World Championships, I will remember that gold medal and men's doubles as the most uh, spectacular one for sure. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Uh, I, I to be honest, I have a hard time answering this question. Um, I feel like the in the different categories, it's it's been like this the same small group of players who has been dominating in general. Uh, so, I would say the the best moments in badminton in general for me personally has has been uh, all the events that uh, Ansi Young has has been winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is your favorite. That is your favorite. No, those have been great to to follow. Yeah. But yeah, I I think yeah. you're completely right. Like Yamaguchi and Chen and Jia women's doubles, uh, Sheng Siwei, Guang Yakyong in mixed doubles, and Victor, they have obviously been very, very dominating in uh, in those four categories. So yeah, that's fine. Let's uh, let's wrap up that question. Um, but it must have yeah. been. I I mean, like I almost can't remember 2021 at this point. But it must have been like the the first year since uh, covid started where we have got got gotten back to to travel the whole world except except for china and hong kong right yeah 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 definitely but i still think 2022 we have had less travel compared to like a normal badminton year pre covid uh, next year the calendar looks intense very very intense with a lot of events uh, which is good in many ways that hopefully we can get back to like a full normal uh, calendar um, I think I think that's exciting not only for the players but also especially for the uh, for the fans of uh, of badminton. Yeah, we just we just need I mean we just need uh, China and Hong Kong to to yeah. to open open up again and then we are I think ready to go into something that looks like a normal calendar uh, tournament yeah. calendar. Um, I I would say that obviously the uh, obviously the uh, the schedule is is tough. There's a lot of tournaments. But for me personally, it's fine, fine for yeah. me. I mean, I'm it. I mean, I'm just so eager to get out and travel. And I think, don't you say that it's, it's, it's when you when you when you don't have something, you realize how much you actually like something or miss something. And yeah. I've I've been feeling like that. I mean, I've really started to like appreciate uh, the moments out traveling. Um, mm playing tournaments being on the tour with with uh, all you guys like the the Danish players all all many of my good friends and stuff mm. and performing in in front of a uh, in front of a crowd and everything it's just like you only you only have like a small amount of time in your life to 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 live this life i mean you for some reason you can go on for forever but for <laughs> for all, all for for most of the players you only have like i don't know yeah. 5 10 maximum 15 years uh, on on the world tour so it's like um, it's a, uh, it's some, it's some valuable years, and I feel like we have missed out on a lot here during COVID, uh, and 
obviously personally i've missed out on a lot the last year mm-hmm. so it's like i'm just eager to 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 get back out and and uh, and experience this uh, this life because it's a uh, it's a limited amount of of years that that you have to to do this 100% 100% honest let's carry on with another question this one is directed directly at you actually uh, like it's it's basically a question about like how long your exposure is to like when you're using these cold bath uh, you mm. also you uh, i saw you shared a story that you missed uh, doing cold bath uh, in uh, in the sea here in denmark with the uh, key master of you used to do that so like how much do you do it and like how, how long would you stay in the uh, in the cold water uh, when you do it yeah so um i think during a uh, cold uh, baths uh is is something that i picked up like let's say a year ago or something um i do it every 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 uh, sunday uh, sunday is my rest day um so i'm not i'm not a, an expert on on the topic but i think it's something that you shouldn't do on your training days uh you know people talk about you want the adaptation you want the like the gains from your from your top sessions and if you just go directly into the the cold plunge you you kind of like stop that effect that you're actually trying to gain from from doing the training so i do it i do it on rest days because it feels super nice for for my recovery and i, I also believe there is a lot of mental uh in it like it's it's not easy to go into the cold it's uh, mm. it's very difficult and it's challenging it's challenging to challenging to like overcome the fear of of the extreme cold uh and then it challenges your your breaths as well and everything so uh, i just feel super super good and energized uh, if if i've been in the cold plunge uh mm. usually i would combine it with sauna if I, if i have the opportunity so i would maybe do like 20 minutes in the sauna mm two or three minutes in the cold plunge and then do a few rounds, two or three rounds or something like that. Um, so I was in the cold plunge this Sunday and it was like 4.7 degrees. Ooh. Yeah, it was, it was very cold. Um, I think I've tried, I, I've tried colder before uh, mm. in, in, in the Danish sea water. Um, yeah. no, so me and, me and Kimastro, the story that you talked about, me and Kimastro had this Sunday routine where we would, where we would jump in in the water in Denmark when it uh, when it's uh, cold enough um and uh, it's just it's colder in the sea because there's movement in the water so there's like mm. waves hitting you and stuff whereas if you just if you just go down to the water and you're just uh, in in a plunge where the water is, is still mm. it, you're you are I don't know I mean the the physics or anything but there's building this like thermal layer around you so mm. It, it's it's getting easier to handle but if you move around a bit and there's waves coming it's it's getting much much uh, colder so yeah that makes um, sense makes sense it's it's never really do you ever do you I, ever use it i've tried it very few times uh, and it's very rare that like i would do a cold shower even when we are at tournaments or stuff like that uh, i can do it every now and then but it's very very rare it's it's not really something i enjoy too much to be honest uh, yeah i mean i i enjoy it but i also don't enjoy it at the same yeah, time but yeah, i think yeah, if, yeah. You, if 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 you if you mix it up with doing like very warm water and then very cold water or sauna and cold plunge let's say you just do it on the legs uh you can just do it in the bath just turn it on to like high heat go on the legs for a few minutes very cold go on the legs for a few minutes and d- then change a few times i would say that the, your legs feels feels uh, like softer uh, afterwards so i think it's a good idea to to try out if you're out playing uh, like a competition and you have to recover yeah. for for the up for the for the next day it's uh, definitely pro- a good idea to try out problem is that i lost first round in most events so i didn't really have to recover for the next day i had to recover for the next week so i would just prefer yeah. a warm bath <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah man. i mean the warm bath is good as well they're super yeah. good <laughs> yeah 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 all right should we grab one final one before we wrap it up yeah um let's do it i have one here yep difference difference between top 10 and top 100 players can you like in Ooh. say what's the what's the biggest uh, difference in general uh What is it that those players that reaches the top 10, what what is it that they master that the rest don't? I think 
obviously there is a lot of differences actually when you go from from 10 to 100 but i think overall the general consistency in terms of quality is much much higher at top 10 level so you will find players just around top 100 who are actually on the good days and in the like on their top level they can play some amazing badminton but the consistency is just so much up and down so even a top 10 player who is being rated as actually a little bit of inconsistent it's only inconsistent compared to the other guys on the top like if you compare it to the guys outside of top 100 or outside of top 50 even they are so much more uh, consistent in the performances in terms of choice of shot quality of the shots uh, so i feel like it's not that often it's because they have a lot of great technical abilities necessarily some do but overall i would say like the the general consistency is just much much higher uh, when you look at the top guys compared to uh, the rest of the pack would you agree yeah and, and i'm yeah i definitely agree but i also think that, that consistency is is it's something that we talk about so often i remember when we mm. when we when we asked uh, Taufik Hidayat when we did the amazing podcast with him uh, in Indonesia this summer, we asked him about the Indonesian players like Ginting and Christy and, and Gustavito. And, and he said that they were like sometimes very good, and but they were just lacking consistency. Hmm. And, and it's like, I feel like you can say that about so many players, except for Victor and except, except for Momota when he was uh, at his hmm. best. Um, but it's like, but how do you how do you how do you like maintain that consistency? Is there something that you can do? Is is it something with your like ability to focus, or how do you mm. main, how do you get to that point where you can be consistent all the time? Mm. Is it just like if you practice enough, you get you get to a point where you never make mistakes, or, or yeah, yeah. how how do you? I mean, I was go- I think I was going to ask Taufik, but I like yeah. consistency too, definitely. Um, but but is it just, again, is it from, again, I would, is it from confidence? Or? Yeah, but I would say you lack consistency compared to a guy like Victor, but you definitely don't lack consistency compared to a guy who's outside of top 100. And when I talk about consistency, uh, the difference between those two levels of players, it's not necessarily consistency in terms of performance. So in terms of winning and producing results, it's also consistency in terms of like the quality of your shots. So like when when you when you're in defense, for example, that your defense is always like within this height height from the net, where a player outside of top one hundred, maybe on his good days it's like that, on other days it's more like this much over. Um, so like I, I just feel like the overall consistency in terms of shot quality, for example, that is is much much higher. And even though you have that consistency, it doesn't necessarily mean you perform every single time because there's much more to performing at top ten level. Than just hitting the right shots. It's also making the right decisions. It's also being in the right state of mind, and that's actually where one thing where sometimes I can get a little bit annoyed when former players say that yeah, back in the days there were a lot of more consistent uh, players and stuff because it was also there were a lot of less tournaments, less traveling. Uh, so it's I, I think it's a lot harder today to be consistent all the time because there are a lot more things you have to attend to than you you had to in the past. Um, yeah, but obviously it, it's a good question. Like, how do you get that consistency in terms of performance? Because if it, that was easy to answer, I think a lot more players would uh, would be more consistent. But as you say, it's it's definitely something you can say about a lot of guys that they need more consistency in terms of performance, no doubt. Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a good question. I would like to be more consistent. Uh, I'll I'll try to figure it out and then let let you know if I <laughs> if I do. But you I find think the magic it also formula. Comes down, <laughs> I think it also comes down to obviously confidence is is a big thing. Mm. If if you're really on a on a roll, uh, you just do better because you're super confident. You never really you trust everything you do. You just have this feeling of. Mm. It's 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 a deciding moment in the match, but I've been here so many times uh, in the past lately, and I've won so many times. So yeah, yeah. but it also yeah. is like you need to be extremely hungry all the time. Mm. There are so mm. many good players uh, in in the world at this point, um, and if you are not like very very focused and very very hungry every single tournament, you are going to face someone who who can beat you on the day. So. 
yeah. think that's um, that's also where Victor like separates himself from everyone mm -hmm. else. Is like every single match is like it, it means so much to him. Um, yeah, he wants and, it so and bad. And it, yeah. it, it it might not be the case for for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And as you say, there are so many tournaments at this point. So if you lose one week, it's not a big deal. You 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 have a chance again the next week. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's I don't think that's uh, his mentality. Yeah, um, so sure I think that's sure. uh, yeah. One one other difference I would mention uh, between the top players and outside of top hundred is that also top players usually have more than one way they can uh, play at a high level. So basically, often players at lower level they have one way they want to play, and if that's not working, they don't really have any uh, any other ways to solve uh, things or uh, yeah to be able to win at a at a high level. So I think that's also like a, a main difference uh, between the two yeah good one yeah good one to 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 finish off uh, the episode on yeah i agree that was just clever words from me <laughs> yeah it was a good episode i liked it though uh, i was a little bit worried going into it i didn't really know what we were going to talk about and stuff but i think we we <laughs> we did we did we a did good fine. job we did fine yeah yeah. So um, and uh, hopefully you guys agree. And if you do, please leave a comment. If you don't agree, please leave a comment as well and uh, divert it to Anas and say he did not do a good job. But no, seriously, every any kind of uh, criticism uh, we uh, welcome it. Uh, we want to make this podcast as good as possible for you guys. Definitely. So uh, I didn't. I don't know if you got to say it, Hans Christian. But if you haven't done it, guys, please hit that subscribe button, like this video. Leave a comment, um, share it with all your friends and family. Uh, and, uh, and that's it for, for this episode of the Bampton Experience. We are out. Thank you, guys. Bye.